The Almighty, Part 4 of 4 on Between Master and Disciples, given in English on October 1st and 2nd, 2006, in Spain. So you guys pay attention to this, okay? The body needs food. The soul, the spirit need meditation power to boost up, okay? To go up. Really, please, even if you are in a mundane environment, you still can keep your mind focused. You still can. If that's all you want, nothing can really distract you. Maybe a little bit, but not too long. You have to get to that level so that nothing distracts you anymore. And even if it does, just like dust from your clothes, you shake it and it's gone. And not like the mud that clings to your body and cake on your skin. That's a different thing. Not into the mud. You get onto the dry land and I wash you clean up from the mud. doesn't cling to your body, doesn't cake your skin anymore. And after a while, even you walk on the road, it might be dusty, yeah, but not like the mud, okay? So get out on the dry lane first and just walk on the dry lane. And even though you're a little dusty, very easy, even five minutes meditation, go on, yeah? Okay? <laughs> so please, if you have some like a very sharp kind of question and and this kind of argumentative or provoking or kind of, a, how you say, challenging question, please ask yourself first, this question, does it really serve me? Huh? Do I really ask a correct question or I'm just blah, 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 to get attention or just to, to vent your, my social, <laughs> social behavior on somebody or even on the Master? Just because you live in just a social, uh, uh, how you say, dirty environment. And you came here, you didn't clean yourself, you just throw dirt on people or even on the Master, just because you're so used to it. Or you're angry inside of something and then you just blurt it out. It's useless for you, even if I answer it and even if you understand it. These all are still in intellectual level, you know what I mean? It's not the real thing. No matter how eloquent I am in describing an apple to you, you might see the vivid picture in your eyes, in your mental eyes, but you still don't taste the apple. I might be very good at describing it, and you even feel mouth-watering. <laughs> mm. Wow, I wish I'd have an apple. And I understood what an apple looked like, and it, I understood what it tastes like, but I don't have an apple. Apple is what you need not a glorious uh, description of it, no, no matter how good <laughs> the description. So even here, I'm coming here not to talk to you, really, not to even answer your question, and not to make you think that I really understand everything of the... I really understood everything from the universe. Oh, I really had a great eloquence. It's not that. It's just my presence that is a gift to you. Anything I talk, it's just okay to make you focus on me or to make your mind a little relaxed, <laughs> okay? Just my presence. That's the best, uh, how you say, lecture I could give to you. <laughs> of course, I'm here. You like me to talk. That's why I told you nonsense, all nonsense. <laughs> because according to me, they're also nonsense. Whatever I say is nonsense. It's like a entertainment for your mind. But for the soul, you have different entertainment, deeper, better, truly awaken you, shake you up, shake the dirt out of huh? your being. That is, if you have any being to shake it. <laughs> what I mean is the dirt from your mind, so that uh, he can let your soul free. Because the mind, you know, it's the concept of the mind, it's the trouble of the mind that keep the soul bound. Otherwise, nothing can bound the soul. The soul wants to 
use the mind and the body to experiment whatever around here. But if the mind and the body is not you know, on a very cooperative mood, or not on a very high level. So we just keep relying on those information and binding together, and that's how you're not liberated. It's just the mind that's the problem. Hmm? So when you meditate well, deep, you fly away from, from the mind for that moment. That's why you experience deep happiness, which you cannot describe anyway. The, the moment that you, you suddenly lift up in samadhi, that is just something extraordinary. And if you do that any time, any time, any day, then the, 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 the soul will be so used to, again, you know, the freedom, like when he sleeps. When we, we, when we sleep because the soul is tired, want to get out, and at that time he's free. But the daytime he had to <laughs> follow the mind to see what's going on, uh, to try to direct the mind, but the mind keeps feeding wrong information. So if you meditate, you know how to get out of, of the mind and don't need it, okay? And just look, the soul will look at it, the soul by himself, himself or herself. And then can direct the mind more correctly what to do, instead of relying on the inf wrong information or even right information, fitting by the mind, yeah? The soul is very gentle, <laughs> very beautiful. The soul doesn't understand the complication, the filthiness of the world. But uh, that's why the mind is good. The mind keeps feeding information, the soul believes it. So it's better the soul get out of the mind and direct instead of following the mind. <laughs> because if follow the mind, also cannot direct well. Okay, so the soul has to be out. Like the master, the, the driver, cannot just uh, follow the steering wheel. When the steering wheel is wrong, it is steer by itself, <laughs> then it's bad. Eh? The driver has to steer the steering wheel. Okay, this is all human language. I'm so frustrated. <laughs> I'm frustrated because I don't know how to talk anymore. I used to be more eloquent, right? Let's face it, really. No? Don't you feel the difference? I do. I do. No. I remember when I was um, when I first came out, you know, I only used the, uh, the second level talk most of the time. And I was very eloquent. I, be, I remember whoever asked any question, can, nobody can argue with me. But right now, if you argue with me, my, maybe I'm stunned. I say, oh, what is that? <laughs> yeah, really. I do know the difference. Maybe you don't. Yeah? Maybe you don't. Hmm. Maybe right now, if you ask me many of those stupid questions, I don't know how to answer anymore. Probably you will win. So I'll try it and to feel, feel good, just to feel good that you win. Okay? I really don't have that eloquence that I used to have. But you don't feel it? No. <laughs> No? The different, different eloquence. Yeah. Mm. Oh, I guess. Ah, uh, okay, okay. That's good. Good idea. <laughs> yeah, it's true, it's true. Because I don't talk about those argumentative second level talk anymore. So if you ask me those questions, I, I probably. Yeah, I notice it myself only. Maybe you don't know it because you don't ask such questions much anymore, except a couple yesterday. And you can see I don't really answer well. <laughs> I notice it myself, because most of the time now you don't ask this question anymore, so you don't notice it, yeah? But when I go outside, the outside people, they ask the kind of question that uh, you used to ask before, or other people used to ask before, and I don't know how to answer. I, I, I just, um, I don't think anymore in that direction. I just, uh, what? I I don't even feel tired. I don't know why why I can't answer it. <laughs> I just shut and show and answer the way outside people just say anything just to you know <laughs> to get away with it. That's it. It's not the way I fiercely and uh, how you say enthusiastically you know try convince the people by my power of talk. I wasn't even enthusiastic anymore. Even if I want to, I just. Stand there, 
I, you know, I just kind of stunned. Why does he ask these questions? <laughs> That's probably most of the time I ask like that. And I really don't know. Most of the time I couldn't answer anymore the way I answered before. I, I guess it's not necessary anymore. And I have to tell you also that when I was enlightened, it was just hundred percent. It's like uh, the master level. So, uh, and I have to confess with you, I only knew the fifth level then, okay? <laughs> and later I meditate more and on the retreat and all that myself. Then I go higher very fast, boop! Then I realize, ah, <laughs> that's not it. <laughs> it wasn't it, it was not that. <laughs> uh, I tell you a joke. There's a young soldier, yeah, went into the army for fighting. And every day, the uh, the commander in chief, the commander, you know, the colonel, keep notice, notice that this guy keep going around everywhere, picking up any piece of paper on the ground, and look at it and say, and throw it away. See, it's not it. So he keep going day in, day out, day and night. If he see any piece of paper, he pick it up and read it and throw it away. That's not it. <laughs> Keep doing that all the time, picking paper, read it and throw it away, say, that's not it. So the, the commander-in-chief, you know, the colonel or general, thought that he is something wrong. He sent him to a psychiatrist and the psychiatrist also think there's something wrong with him. So wrote a discharge paper for him to go home, yeah? No more shoulder duty. And he picked that up, he read it and said, this is it. <laughs> yeah. I was so happy when I discovered during my retreat, what is it all about? Me. <laughs> I was so happy, I had nobody to talk to. But I was also angry. I said, why? Why? Why now? Why not before? Make me suffer all this time. <laughs> all this illusion and all this uh, nonsense. And then, uh, of course, then I know, if I realize what I did, I probably won't go out and talk. I couldn't even talk. I couldn't be eloquent the way it was. I couldn't have that, how you say, low-left eloquence <laughs> to deal with the, the low-left at that time. Yeah, then it's okay too. <sighs> but it was, <laughs> it was <laughs> a little bit, uh, you know, happy and uh, frustrated at the same time. Nevertheless, I forgot it already. I forgot what it was. <laughs> okay. So I, I'm still your master. It's the same, <laughs> same like before. Yeah, but not the same. <laughs> the same, but not the same. For example, even on the fifth level, you sometimes still wonder, "Am I?" <laughs> you understand what I mean? Even you guys, even if if sometimes you get to the fifth level, or if I say you are on the fifth level, you still have a little wondering. Yeah. After that, no more. That's why the master yesterday, I told you, no, the day before, everybody tell him he'd die, horribly, if he keep telling them. He still say it, because there's no, no other thing he can say. He tells the truth, you know, because he realizes it. There's nothing can shake it. No doubt, no question, no nada, nothing anymore. So he just have to proclaim what he is. You understand? And uh, moreover, he knew that he has to die for the people. That's the only way he can teach them, he can cleanse them. That's what he thought at that time. Well, if a society can kill somebody who's so innocent, who does nothing wrong, in such a horrible way, then can you imagine how else the Master can teach them? Like the time of Jesus, how else can he teach and cleanse them? They're not civilized enough even to listen to anything. 
even if that master, the one who who they who they vivisect, die, even if he say, "I am the true," even if he tell the lie, and you just don't listen to him and just think he's a crazy man, that's enough. Why you have to kill him like that? Now you understand what kind of society that he lived in, yeah? And that's the only way he can liberate some of the people, his disciples and outside alike. The story ended like this. Remember the story? It's so horrible that after I read it, I throw the book away. I don't even want to, to, to even know about it. But then, uh, I don't know, I pick it back. <laughs> I thought maybe you could learn something from it, even though it's so horrific. I did not even want to let you know. But I thought maybe I could teach you something out of this, yeah? We should gain a little bit of diamond out of the whole big dirty filth, yeah? So the story ended like this. One of his... Uh, Non, non disciple, but uh, like uh, maybe acquaintance or associate, uh, wanted so much to know what happened. Okay, he knows that the, the Master say that, uh, of course, that the one who follows him will be liberated, yeah, and blessed. So he wanted to know so much about the people who persecuted him. What happened to them? So the Master appeared in the dream or in a vision and tell him. I think he was an initiated person, but kind of contact inside or admire him. I wasn't sure if that Master ever initiated anybody. Maybe some people will follow him only, because at that time there were many other Masters yeah, who are more openly teaching, because they teach accordingly to the government line and don't proclaim anything. Maybe they were not even they did not reach the level that level, so they could not reclaim climb anything. Okay, never mind. Let's let's finish the story first. Um, so he wanted that acquaintance of the deceased master, the persecuted master, want to know what happened to the people who persecute him. So he appeared to him and say that both are blessed by God. The one who support him and want to rescue him or follow him, they did it because of God. They believe in God, yeah, for God's sake. And the one who persecuted him also for God's sake, because they think he did against God. So both did it for God's sake. Uh, so God blessed them both. Perhaps the Master knew already the outcome, so he blessed them already beforehand. Anyway, so at that time, uh, many master was uh, teaching the same thing with him, of course, but they want him not to say that he's the truth. Yeah, that means I'm God. Yeah, want him not to say that because he were killed. Nevertheless, he said that all the time. If anybody asks him who he is, he said, "I'm the truth." <laughs> if he proclaimed in the marketplace, and he knew he had to die, and uh, even at the time of death, he proclaimed the same. At that time, many masters teach the same method that he, he, he did. But mm, uh, so a lot of people already follow him. And this master has also been studying before when he was younger, now of course, been studying with these masters. Yeah. But he separated himself out of all. Not because he said the other masters are no good, not that, but he, he became different. Uh, not the way other masters do. Like most of the master, for example, in India nowadays, even if the master come out like a successor of some great already famous master, so that the tradition is this: you come out, you preach the teaching, and you always praise the master. You know what I mean? My master was this. My master will do this for you. My master will do that for you. Do this for you. My master, the great, never proclaim himself. Um, that's they call humility, and this is rightly so. And the master of this type should have humility, should always praise God, praise the master before him, and accredit all the blessing and power to his master. That is correct. But this man, he doesn't. 
You see, the one who has been persecuted so gruesomely like that, he did not. He proclaimed, I am the truth. And he teach many crazy things according to the book. He say, he teach crazy, you know, he became crazy. He doesn't do it the way any other master or the contemporary master did. So they predicted that he would die on the gallows, you know. Normally they just chop his head, but in this case they, oh, they make it so horrible. Because he was the truth, he is the truth, he cannot say anything else. And the more they force him to say otherwise, the more he proclaimed that I am the truth. What would you say if you know who you are? Hmm? If you know you're a doctor, you graduated, wouldn't you say, yes, I am a doctor, I am a surgeon, huh? certified surgeon, I am, I would say, graduated, I am a doctor, surgeon. No? Wouldn't you say that? Or I am a dentist, yeah? Or I am a professor? Oh, I am a PhD. Whatever you are, you say it. No matter how many people say you are not, can you be convinced that you are not? You know it yourself, oh my God, I am a doctor. <laughs> so other people who don't know you don't even see the certificate, even if you cannot prove it because you left your certificate at home in a safe box. But you say, I am a doctor, and say, no, you are not. You are just lying. No, I am, I am not lying. I am a doctor. I am a doctor. You know what I mean? The more they say you're lying, the more you say, no, no, I'm not lying. It's true, I'm a doctor. For God's sake, I am a doctor. Yeah? Even you cannot prove it because you might be traveling far and you don't just take your doctor's certificate everywhere with you, do you? No, huh? Some of you here are doctors, but you don't carry it in your pocket all the time. So the people who know her here or him here know, okay, of course, if he says he's a doctor, he's a doctor. And, he treat, and then let him treat us. And then we know more and more the way he treats us, we know that, okay, he's, well, nobody even doubts him because we all know and trust him. But the people outside, suppose he go on the street and say he's a doctor, people might believe, maybe not, until he's in action, or, until, or maybe they don't even let him treat, you know? If, if even uh, language is not even, <laughs> uh, not the same language. For example, uh, an English a doctor here come out and talk to some Spanish pe peasant outside and say he's a doctor, maybe difficult to convince. You know what I mean? He can't explain it, so he won't let you treat him. Yeah? Don't touch me. I don't know who you are. For example, like that. Huh? And maybe even say that he tell a lie or whatever, because maybe he don't look like a doctor. Maybe he's on holiday now. He grow a big bear like this, you know, and his hair will grow long because he's so fed up with shaving every day. So on holiday, he just let loose. And by the way, you see uh, some people sick or in emergency need. He want to treat him. You see what I mean? Want to help him, but maybe they don't believe him. Because he doesn't look like a doctor. The doctor I see in the hospital, well shaven and with a white coat. You don't have even a white coat. <laughs> and your beard looks so long, and your hair looks so matted, you know? He doesn't look like a doctor. Yeah, something like that. But nevertheless, he is. And he cannot proclaim otherwise, no matter how, how people tell him to. Yeah? Now you understand? Maybe. <laughs> okay, let you go eat. <laughs> I love you anyway. Okay.